Sir, can you hear me? Sir? Can I have some help, please? Okay, he's not breathing, he's got a little pulse. So, can you do a pre call your thumb, please? And then can you bag and ask him and then we'll start asking questions. So, what we've got here is that we've now got we've got a crazy chaotic electrical pattern that regular heartbeat disappeared that's a cardiac arrest that's ventricular fibrillation his heart is not pumping there's no blood going around Stephanie couldn't feel a pulse and she's given the instructions to the others this basic resuscitation is what's required immediately that this sort of stuff happens whilst we wait for the cardiac arrest team to arrive with the defibrillator and what our guys are doing here is very basic resuscitation skills that these guys have learned in year one and these guys are now year four and year five so they're applying that basic resuscitation technique and they're hoping that the cavalry is going to arrive at any minute or alternatively that they're going to have a positive effect and we've moved now and we've got uh, an output we hope and so he's now got a regular steady pulse and his oxygen is going to come up, he's going to start breathing again now. Uh, all of these interventions I'm doing on the fly at the moment and I'm just putting them in as I go along, but we normally would have these already pre-programmed into the computer so they would respond to these improvements. So his oxygen is going up, his heart rate is steady, his respiratory is back up and his blood pressure has come back up. So they've been extremely successful in their resuscitation of their effects. Um, we feel that this is a very important part of modern medical education. It prepares the students for what their job is going to be, which is about being young doctors at the front line, meeting serious illnesses, dealing with acute problems. It's not the only thing we prepare them for. We also prepare them for the communication skills that they'll need as doctors. We prepare them to be able to talk to people. We prepare them to be able to deal with um, breaking bad news and even how to hold a tele telephone conversation in order to be able to talk to another clinician at the end of the line, you know, in an emergency, speak to a senior to get help and advice on how to do that effectively. Ben will tell you a bit about his. Uh, experience of the year five simulations and I'll turn these alarms off. Essentially in the year five everything kind of steps up again. You're put into a room with um, four or five other um, year fives. Tutors all hide away behind a two-way mirror with cameras, microphones and a speaker. And you come into the room to find this gentleman or lady because he is both. Um, and they will talk to you, they will respond, they will say hello, how are you, they'll probably say that they're in pain, that they're not feeling too well, which is why we've been called. But then they quite quickly go off and the monitors start to show worrying patterns. We start to put in drips, we put up um, lines to go into the patient, give them drugs and towards the end, because sometimes it happens, um, they will have a heart attack and we have to defibrillate them. The equipment we use is live, it's all real. Um, and we learn to be safe in our communication of telling people that we want things to happen and making sure they are happening. But also when we're firing the defibrillator, obviously it's live electric and you have to make sure everyone is being safe and kind of with that. So it prepares you for when you actually get stuck on the ward and no one's coming to help um, in F1. It's, it's very strange. When you're actually in the room, you really don't want this patient to die. It, it becomes very real and you all start getting into this delusion of actually, this is a real patient. It's odd when you look at it and when you first go in for your first sessions with Zimman, it's all very not realistic. It's all very kind of, this is a plastic man with big metal things where his nipples should be. Um, but you soon kind of get past that and because everything starts happening and you actually do see a change and you see him, he grimaces and things actually happen. He'll stop breathing. Um, he bleeds in some cases. We can vomit. <laughs> um, it, it's strange. It's very hard to explain, but it does feel like an actual patient. <laughs> I mean, there's no doubt that actually you know, doing it live on a real patient is an entirely different level of experience. 
but this at least can prepare you for that. Rather than having to go from this level to that level, you're starting off from that level. And Ben's right, you do lose the sense of disbelief. You get into it and you... I, yesterday I was um, with some uh, senior doctors over in the hospital. We were running an advanced trauma life support course. And some of the clinicians in the simulation were senior consultants who'd been doing this job for many years and were used to doing it live. And afterwards when we came out, we were talking and debriefing about it, one of them particularly was saying, I felt really stressed in that. And you just think, well, you know, that gives you some impression of how, how much of an impact this can actually have. It's not just about stressing people, but it's about helping them to learn. And just pushing them that little bit does actually make a big impact. And I'm, sh I'm sure that this has had a very positive impact on our students. Some of the work that we've done to look at the, the, the impact, it does suggest it is very meaningful because it, it takes them from the textbook and as they then can see how you're applying that theory into practice. And it's very often that first time that they've actually had that opportunity. Because you know, when you're a medical student, you go around, consultants ask you questions all the time. But it's, you know, saying, what would you do? And you say, well, I would give. And you say, well done, that's the right answer. But you're not actually being asked to do it. What we say is, you've got to do it. So, you know, you are, you know, living or the, or the mannequin is living or dying on your decisions. And you do get placements where you get involved. I mean, you're not leading it by any means, but I had a placement with the emergency department in Derriford. And you are involved in crashes and pa patients come in after having a heart attack, not in a good state, essentially. And you are part of the team. You're a very low part, but you've got to know where to stand. And just from having worked through it with an actual body or sim man, it gives you a kind of perspective on where you should be and what you should be doing. Also what we do teach is not only the technical side of it, not only they, you know, in this case give drug A or give drug B, but we also uh, concentrate or have some concentration on what happens around the team, the communication that takes place between one team member and another, or the person who's acting as leader, how they led the team. So we, and we've learned a lot of lessons from the aviation industry, from cockpit, from airline pilot cockpit training, uh, how they manage emergency situations. And a lot of that learning has been translated into how medics work in emergency situations. We use that as a means of encouraging higher quality communication. Well, I hope we've whetted some of your appetites for, for those of you who would like to come to Peninsula Medical School. We have no age bar. <laughs> so, uh, you know, please feel free to, to apply. And, um, well, if you do, I hope you, you come and enjoy this program. Enjoy it. Hope you enjoy the rest of your day. Thank you very much.